Now, when I say Japanese vampire horror movies, not much may come to mind, and that is simply because there are very few, and I mean very few, Japanese vampire movies out there, which in my opinion is a grave injustice. However, I managed to find five, so today on Top 5 Scary Videos, I'm gonna be counting down our list of the top five scary Japanese vampire horror movies. If you wanna check out similar videos like this one, be sure to click on our scary movies playlist right after this. Before we begin though, be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding to some of your comments. And with that, let's jump in. Also, I apologize in advance for my pronunciations. I am not Japanese. Come in at number 5, Escape from Vampire Island. Directed by Tai Jun Kim and released in 2009, Escape from Vampire Island, also known as Higanjima, is an eerie island occupied by vampires from where none has ever come back alive. When teenager Akira hears that his missing brother has been seen on the island, he decides to investigate with several friends. Now Japanese vampire movies are few and far between, with folks either loving them or hating them. On one hand, they differ from western cliches, but on the other day it can be incredibly cheesy, silly and have you laughing out loud which is not always the desired reaction. Now Escape from Vampire Island is mediocre, it's not terrible but it's also easily forgettable. It drags on and unlike the rest of the movies on our list has very few martial arts scenes with them being played down drastically. Despite all that the vampire is actually pretty damn cool, however she wasn't cool enough to save the entire movie sadly. The acting is shaky in parts and the CGI horror elements are some of the less successful parts of the movie, however you you can't help but admire the movie for what it is trying to do. It's worth a watch, just maybe only once. Coming in at number 4 we have Yakuza Apocalypse. Directed by Takashi Miike and released in 2015, Yakuza Apocalypse tells the story of Yakuza, a ruthless underground world, in which no one is more legendary than boss Kamiura, rumoured to be invincible. The truth is he is a vampire, a blood sucking Yakuza vampire boss, which saying out loud is incredibly comical. The movie successfully treads the line between the sublime and absolute ridiculous, with the third act descending into utter madness. Now interestingly, the movie features Indonesian action stunt choreographer Yeyan Ruyen, who had previously starred in The Raid and Raid 2, which are two incredible movies that you need to go check out right after watching this video, trust me, because they're far better than anything on this list. Not to throw shade, but shade has been thrown. <laughs> The movie at times feels like a runaway train that you can't quite keep up with. It is comical genius with many moments that you won't believe until you see it. Takashi has created an absolutely bizarre gangster versus vampire action comedy horror that is actually a very good movie as long as you can keep up with its crazy anarchy. The movie received mixed to positive reviews from critics with it garnering a 63% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes and a 62 out of 100 on Metacritic. One viewer commented, I quote, It is extremely mad, long and often tiresome, yet it is active with eerie and absolute conviction and has an interestingly surreal quality. Meek has a claim to be one of cinema's genuine surrealists. Coming in at number 3 we have Evil of Dracula. Directed by Michio Yamamoto and released in 1975, Evil of Dracula tells the story of Dracula who was shipwrecked in the 1600s in Japan when Christianity was illegal. He was forced to spit on the cross and wander alone in the desert. During this time he found himself to be bleeding and discovered that he had a taste for it in turn attacking a local Teen. Now in present day a professor takes up a new post at an all girls school only to discover that the school's principal conceals a dark secret and the pupils are all in grave danger. Now it should be noted that as the final chapter in the trilogy, Evil of Dracula is considered to be the worst, however that doesn't take away from the fact that it is incredibly entertaining. Now a lot of the scary moments are slow and steady, however the movie is beautifully shot aside from the try hard elements to it, which proves it's doing everything it can to be a copy of the Hammer Vampire movie. Movie. Some advice though if you do seek this offbeat movie out make sure you watch the original and not the dubbed version because the dubbing is absolutely awful and not in a fun Dario Argento way. Hell no. Coming in at number 2, Lake of Dracula. Directed once again by Michio Yamamoto and released in 1971, the Lake of Dracula follows a doctor who investigates the murders of several women at a lakeside resort. His investigation leads him to believe that a vampire may be responsible for the murders, so he sets out to track the vampire down. Now during this time a young girl has a terrifying nightmare about a vampire with blazing golden eyes. Years later the dream is revealed to be a hellish prophecy when a strange package containing an empty coffin 
mysteriously turns up at a nearby lake. Now the movie is beautifully shot however it does lack bite when it comes to its horror elements, not to mention it runs up steam around halfway through the movie. Funny enough, despite being named Lake of Dracula, the film does not actually feature the character Dracula, however the character is alluded to twice. The movie was dubbed into English and given a television release in 1980 in the United States by United Productions of America under the title of The Lake of Dracula. In the US television prints of the movie, the ending involving the vampire disintegrating was removed. Lake of Dracula was the second of three vampire movies made by Toho Studios in the 70s, the third movie being the one we just discussed, being preceded by The Vampire Doll and followed by Evil of Dracula. Frederick Milstein of the LA Times called the movie, I quote, superficial, unsubtle, humorless, yet stylishly horrific, appealingly gruesome and exciting. And finally, in the number one, we have The Vampire Doll. Directed by Michio Yamamoto and released back in 1970, The Vampire Doll follows Kazuhiko, returning to Tokyo from a six month business trip overseas, who leaves to visit his girlfriend Yuko at her isolated country home. After a week after no one has heard from him, his sister Kiko and her fiance Hiroshi go to find him. Yuko's mother Shidu tells them that he left after being told that Yuku had died when a landslide struck her car two weeks before he arrived. Keiko suspects there is more to the story. She and Hiroshi stay and trace her brother's last steps and end up uncovering tragic and horrifying secrets about Shidu and Yuko. Yamamoto is successful in bringing the horror to this vampire movie and in creating a sense of otherworldliness. The movie builds tension incredibly effectively with small touches that mark the movie, making it stick out above the rest. Now, while the movie hasn't particularly aged well, it isn't a historical reference point in the evolution of Japanese horror. The New York Times gave the movie positive reviews, stating, I quote, tells its grisly story with a cool tact and detachment. Don't be fooled by what seems a conventional staging. There is plenty lurking around the bend. Some of it is hair raising. It also went on to state that the movie was exceptionally well written with a denouement that is fascinating and, well, almost credible. The acting is on par with the rest. The Vampire Doll was the first of three movies made by Toho Studios back in the 70s, with the movie being followed by Lake of Dracula, which we mentioned earlier, and then Evil of Dracula in 1975. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list with any Japanese vampire horror movies that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos, Top 5 Fairy Tales That Would Make Great Horror Movies Part 2. Ryan Wirick said, Can't stop watching her eyes move back and forth while she's reading the script behind the camera. Lol. Lol. Well, what do you want me to do? I gotta read. My eyes move back and forth while I do that. Sorry. Unless you don't find it annoying. In which case, you're welcome. 13 Souls Undone said, Knowledge of obscure fairy tales, dark hair, bright eyes, fair skin, and people are easily enthralled by you. Are you a dark fae, Lucy? No judgement. If I had to be a fae, I would certainly be dark. No one wants to be a light fae. Light fae suck. I learnt that from my favourite show, Lost Girl. You know, the one where I want to be a succubus. But no, I'd be a dark fae for sure. But also, I don't just have this knowledge in my mind. I learn this knowledge while I script. So... Don't be that impressed by me. Sage Pilgrim said, I think I'm just going to start running Lucy Fashion Commentary. Today we have a pale queen and a snugly ribbed camel. Her inner darkness reflected by the black of her denim. I love the bishop's sleeves, great for an unholy goddess. I appreciate this. No one's ever commented on my outfits, and if they do, it's usually bad. Like the time one of you guys told me I slept in the gutter, judging by how I looked. So, no, it wasn't the gutter. It was the trash can. You told me I slept in the trash, so. But thank you, I appreciate it. Please comment more. Nidal said, so you want to whip your sausage out when no one expects it, Lucy. Admirable. I guess I did say that in a video. I don't, it was during the video about the sausage fairy tale. Yeah, makes sense. I don't know why I said whip it out. I didn't even mean for it to be a euphemism, but now I'm glad I said it. I'm always one step ahead of me, you know? <laughs> Sad Seal said, Lucy, I want you to play the woman in black. That would be a dream. I don't even want to be an actor, but if I had to be an actor, I'd be the woman in black. Cast me in everything. She doesn't say shit. She has no dialogue, which is great for me. And she just stands there looking scary. I love that. Susie Harris said, please, please, please talk about the juniper tree. I talked about it. You're welcome. Now you can sleep. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary bit. And until next time, see you later.